Good morning, everybody. It is Sunday, the 16th. Oops, I forgot to change up. Um, I just got done with my morning Bible read. And, well, it was on the subject of taming one's tongue. <clears throat> now, not everybody understands that subject. Um, at first, I didn't either until I read it. Talks about how we can, we have, or we can tame various animals, and the one thing that we cannot tame is our tongues. Um, now, a lot of people speak from their heart, and a lot of times our heart can be quite <clears throat> elegant. Excuse me. Um, our tongue can speak both good and evil. And a lot of times it's whatever is in our heart at the time that comes out the most. And if we are bittered by people or by our situations, we don't always speak with the best intentions or the best method. I know for one that I have allowed myself to basically speak my emotions and um not always the best time to be speaking um <coughs> i know that a lot of people who um sometimes have the best intentions and speak their heart um a lot of people do not take it right because well for me a lot of times I say a lot of things that I have good intentions on, but because I do not have the elegance of words, um, it's not always taken with the best intentions. They say when you don't have anything good to say, don't speak at all. Well, they also say if you don't speak what needs to be spoken, um... Not everybody understands where you're coming from or your needs. Um, but then there are those who are born, um, excuse me, there are those who are born without the ability to speak with their tongue. Um, and of course they know, they are taught at a young age how to use sign language. And I have seen people who um, use sign language to speak, and yeah, even even those people have communication issues. Um, because they're upset, and using sign, they're moving faster than the interpreter's mind can keep up with. Um, that, in fact, are dealing... Me, as a child, I've dealt with people of a foreign language and learning the languages sometimes is not easy. And some foreign languages can be tongue twisters. Um, but I think, all in all, the 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 meaning behind the yeah the meaning behind the message not tired I just woke up um, I think I'm just waking up still um, the the message behind the passage or the section of uh, James um, what is trying to be conveyed is not exactly taming your tongue, but I guess it would be considered taming your tongue, is to be mindful of your words, mindful of what you speak. 
and how it can affect others. Because I know from experience that even best intended conversations or words can be taken in the wrong direction. Ah, I'm all kinds of messed up this morning. <sighs> Anyhow. I just lost track of what I was talking about. Oh. The the message behind the verse is basically to be mindful of what you're saying and try to understand not only what you're saying to the person you're talking to, but how that person can take your words in the wrong context depending on tone and inflection and just the words themselves. I mean, there are days where Jan could have the best intentions to try to cheer me up or try to explain something to me or try to get me to understand certain things. And she could be using the best intended words and whatnot, but because my brain is already in a negative frame of mind, it is hard for me to... I guess accept what she's saying or understand what she's trying to say in the meaning that she's trying to say it in. <coughs> Anyhow, that was the Bible verse or Bible piece that I was reading this morning. You know, I've been trying to do this for some time now. And I realize that sometimes that I come on here to do something and I've got it all worked up out, up here. But I can't always get it out in words um, to people. And <clears throat> I've noticed lately that my focus has been kind of scattered. I'm not sleepy. I'll be honest with you, I'm not tired. Um, I probably said this before. When I start talking sometimes, if it's a subject matter or um, just something that I'm... Not just trying to get out in a timely manner, but just trying to get out in general. My camera's about ready to move because I gotta do something. Okay. Um, and I forget, not that I forget to breathe, but I just don't breathe enough in between words or sentences or whatnot. And then because of that lack of oxygen, the body automatically does the yawn. Now, anybody who's ever done any medical research or anything like that, uh, knows that a lot of time a yawn is not always because of boredom or because of being tired. It's because we, our bodies force us to intake a deep breath that looks like what we call the yawn so we get the, the necessary oxygen into our, our lungs. <coughs> and then there are people like me who, if I breathe too much, or if I are, or if I take a deep enough breath that has airborne uh, airborne pollutants, I start to cough. Um, so that's why I'm yawning. Uh, lately, because of gloomy weather and wind and a few other little things here and there. Jerry Ann and I have been um, suffering from 
Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Jenny and I have been suffering from allergies and... I especially, I don't know about Jerry, but I know especially after doing the research and whatnot, I am probably suffering from a form of SAD, S-A-D, Seasonal Adjustment Disorder. So the last week, maybe a little bit more, um, are moods, our emotions and whatnot have been, I wouldn't say negative, but I would definitely say more, um, what's the term I can use? Don't want to say topsy-turvy because, well, it is kind of topsy-turvy, but it's like a roller coaster ride. One day we'll, we'll be fine, the next day we'll be low, and the next day we'll be high, and the next day we'll be low. It's... I wouldn't say bipolar, but, um, almost sounds bipolar. Um, JM thinks I might be bipolar, even though it has not been diagnosed. And I am not saying that I'm reluctant, but I'm just a little, I don't really want to go see a, a, a psychiatrist because last time I went to see psychiatrists, <laughs> All they did was medicate me. And I don't want to go through that again because last time I had to do medication for psychological issues, um, let's just say because of my immune system and the fact that the medication they were giving me was a... Well, I'm going to say artificial type uh, medication. It wasn't a natural medication. And my body has a really resilient um, let's just say that if I were to be prescribed a regular medication like like let's say uh, I don't know any of the names of medications but I, I'm just gonna pick a name off the top of my head I don't know what it is. I just hear the name in my head, Zoloft. Zoloft is a chemical. It's not a natural born herbal type medication. It's a chemical. It's an artificially created in a laboratory type pill. If I were to be prescribed such a pill within two weeks, the medica medical aspect of the pill would be it wouldn't affect me. It would be like uh, popping a Pez. Um, and then they would have to either change the medication or increase the dosage. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a story from my past that will help you understand. At the age of 16 years old, I basically had three to four family members pass away in a short period of time. Literally, within a year's time, I had four family members pass away. Two aunts, a grandmother, well, two aunts, my only living grandparent, which was my grandmother, and my father. I couldn't deal. So, I went to a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist started me on a medication that was for anti-depression, anti-suicidal. Um, and also I ended up spending over the course of a year, actually over the course of three, uh, over the course of six months, I ended up spending three of those six months in a 30 day psychiatric hospital. <laughs> they were prescribing this medication and every two to three weeks they would do a test and then increase the medication. Now by the end of the six month period, they had increased the medication five times. By the time they were thinking about putting me on a sixth change of the same type of medication, just a increase in dosage basically. 
they did a blood draw. They found out through the blood draw that if they had increased the medication one more time, the toxins, because of the me medication within my bloodstream, could have been lethal. Could have caused a could have caused me to have a heart attack at the age of seventeen. I didn't care because at the time I did not see any forward movement in my life. Um, school had basically become just something to do to get out of the house. I was cranky, ready for fights, looking for fights, just ready to do whatever I could to either end my life or just somehow turn it upside down, basically. So they took me off the medication, of course. Now, they couldn't decide what kind of medication to put me on. And I basically had gotten to the point where I said, if your pills aren't going to affect me, if your pills are just going to kill me, you have a choice. Just give me more pills, give me an increase in dosage, or leave me the frick alone. <clears throat> so I had basically realized that nothing of modern day science would work medically. It was just useless throwing money towards somebody who couldn't help me. Or a system that couldn't help me. Put it that way. A system that could not help me. During that time period, I had also started doing research at a very young age, at age 17, 16, 17, doing research on holistic medication, holistic drugs, holistic ways of healing, Native American shamanism. Um, at about the same time frame, I started looking at various different religions, hoping to help me in some way or another. And I mean, I literally looked at Druidism, Native American, uh, Native American shamanism, uh, uh, shamanism of various different cultures, uh, Buddhism, Mohammedism, acupuncture, uh, Eastern medicines. Uh, just started re reading just about every religious text or system or whatever I can get my hands on, including some that most people would be shocked and astonished to realize that somebody like me who who believes in God and reads the Bible and whatnot would ever touch. I mean, I never got into the whole witchcraft, you know, prancing around the woods in the nude type thing. I looked at the the magic factor, the hope the hope that something out there of some sort of mysticism would bring me from the brink of actually I wasn't even at the brink of destruction. I was destroying myself in one way or another. Um it took ten almost thirteen years to to settle, so to speak. So when I say that I know the various sides of the coin for the various belief systems out there. I know enough. I know enough not uh, what not to touch, not what not to play with, what not to even think about. And it's not like I'm a a fountain of of knowledge. I just am more of a spring or a creek of knowledge because I know enough. That when I talk about it, I know what I'm speaking about. Which is one of the <coughs> reasons why when I start looking at what's been going on with our planet. I know there's a multitude of belief systems and a multitude of... of cultures that will tell you we are in the beginning phases of a I wouldn't say a catastrophic kill everything event but we are at the beginnings of a 
a major earth change, a major reset of the way things are. As the Native Americans would put it, we are going to basically unlearn. We're going to have to literally unlearn everything we've learned. We're ha- we're, we need to basically be ready to live without our conveniences of digital era technology. Our th- the world is going... Excuse me. The world is going to change in such a way that we have to either learn how to coexist like they did in the old, old days. So it it's going to be one of those... Our climate's going to change. Our weather system's going to change. Our The very shape and, and, and dimension of our land masses will change. Heck... If you want to look at some of the people who believe in Atlantis, we might find out if Atlantis exists or not. We I don't know. But you've got to look at some of the ancient cultures that are no longer here. What happened to them? The Incas, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Toltecs, uh, the various other groups of people from around the world that just vanished, disappeared from the face of the planet. The only thing left of them is the buildings themselves. But yeah, this has already gotten 21 minutes long of ranting. Well, part of the ranting. But yeah. I'm not telling you people to get religious. I'm not telling you people to start looking for a higher power. I'm just trying to warn you all. Watch the planet. If you have, I have two apps on my on my phone. One of them is an earthquake app, and the other one is a volcanic a volcanic app. And when I look at the two of them and compare them, um, just look at the Ring of Fire. The Pacific Ring of Fire, the the Ring of Fire that basically spans the whole Pacific Ocean, is kicking off. It's got a lot of new earthquake activity. It's got a lot of new volcanic activity. There's acti- There's volcanoes that have been basically dormant for decades that are starting to get a little uh, rumbly in the tumbly in places like Europe, the Mediterranean, the Pacific, the Atlantic, the earthquakes. In fact... For those of you who live here in the United States, if you live in certain areas like around Oklahoma, parts of Tennessee, parts of northern Texas, New Mexican border, there are places that have not seen any earthquake activity in a century that is starting to get active. Places that are known to have earthquakes are getting even more active. In fact, there was a 6.9 or a 7.1 earthquake in Japan. Now, Japan is Japan and 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 California are known to have to have good earthquakes, but to have something that high hasn't happened in 50 plus years. So. Yeah, something's going on out there, folks. But anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Um, If you enjoyed this conversation, give it a thumbs up. If you want to have the chance to view any more, hit that bell so YouTube will notify you that I put another one out. Until then, God bless and have a good day.